Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, beloved community members, to our special event honoring our graduates. We are here this afternoon to honor our beloved ICSC community graduates of all ages with a special program of panelist speakers, ICSC board chair, Brother Iqbal Hassan, Brother Pierre Harbin from our Muslim Muslim youth group, Dr. Heather Lard, who is a mental health professional, and our ICSC religious director, Sheikh Asim Boyoksoy. We are proud of all of our graduates and appreciate you and all that you do to make our ICSC community an example of compassion, service, excellence, and lifelong learning. May God bless and protect all of you. We are starting our program with an opening speech from our ICSC board chair, Brother Iqbal Hassan. Brother Iqbal, the floor is yours. Thank you. Can, can you hear me okay, Erica? Assalamu alaikum, Brother Iqbal. Walaikum salam. Can you hear me okay? Just want to make sure. Erica, can you hear me? I, I think you need to unmute. I have unmuted. Maybe. Let me check again. Hold on. Okay, um, Sister Anne Marie, could you add? Uh, I believe Brother Iqbal, uh, he has also on his phone. Could you add him? Add both of them as panelists. Um, both of Sister them Anne Marie, panelists could you add? Uh, I believe Brother Iqbal, uh, he has also on his phone. Could you add him? Add both of them as panelists. Um, I was able to. Could you add, uh, I believe, Brother Iqbal? Uh, he has also on his phone. Could you add him? Add both of them. I think I can. Erica, can you hear me? Okay, Brother Iqbal, we. Erica, can you hear me okay? Oh, now I can hear you. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Iqbal. How are you doing? Um, Wa alaikum salam. I'm so sorry. I, I, I had heard Anne Marie a little earlier, but uh, I guess something happened in between. So am I okay? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Alhamdulillah. Right, wonderful. So, so go ahead. Welcome and go thank, ahead. Thank you so much. And uh, assalamu alaikum and welcome everybody to this call on behalf of the Islamic Center of Southern California the board members, the volunteers, everybody that's involved that uh, keeps that swing, that uh, center moving and swinging as we always do. Uh, I congratulate every each and every graduate that's here today. Uh, it's a tremendous accomplishment, both educationally and as you all are moving on through these different stages of your lives. Some of you are graduating from very um, from uh, grade school, some are graduating from college. So there's all kinds of participants on this call. And to each and every one of you, I truly, truly want to congratulate you. Uh, I, as a volunteer of the Islamic Center Board, uh, want to stress how important volunteering really is, both to our community and to you all as individuals. Um, not only does the Quran and uh, the Hadith talk about the importance of volunteering, but there's many studies that show that volunteering is actually a, a beautiful benefit to the individual uh, that's doing it and to the community itself. So as a volunteer, I just wanted to kind of remind everybody in their professional capacities and as they move through life as best you can, serve your community. Uh, it will not only benefit, like I said, the community itself, but it also benefits you as an individual. There's tremendous health benefits from it. Uh, physically, you stay active. Mentally, you stay active. There's studies that show you live longer. Um, Sister Erica, as many of you know, is probably who I consider one of the most superb volunteers that we have. There's a, there's a tremendous amount of volunteers that, this, that, the, that, the, that are on the uh, board of directors, not only, but um, the staff and the uh, committee heads of ICSC. 
So none of that would be possible without that. So again, I want to congratulate all of you. Uh, I wish you the best as you continue to move forward in your careers and educational paths. Um, so I will turn it back over to you, Sister Erica, and I believe Pierre is next on the agenda. Thank yeah. you all. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Beautiful words, mashallah. Thank you so much, Brother Iqbal. And um, thank you for your great leadership. And may God bless you and your family. Brother Pierre Harbin, the floor is yours. And please feel free to turn on your video. Oh, okay. Um, I believe you are a panelist. Okay, um, until we figure this out, inshallah, um, Dr. Heather Laird, uh, please go ahead. The floor is yours. I think you have, uh, I'm Pierre Harbin, but I'm the father. So you might see two Pierre Harbins on your screen. And I'm not sure how to work that out, but. Okay, the, so the Sister you hear thank you so much for bringing that to our attention. Sister Anne-Marie, if you could switch um, the participants and add Brother Pierre uh, from the participants as a panelist, that would be great. Thank you. And Dr. Heather Lard, go ahead. The floor is yours. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Erica. Graduates, community members, board members, and ICSC staff and administration, let us take a moment to congratulate our graduates. Today is a day for celebration. And today I want to talk to you all about the importance of your internal voice and your internal sense of control. People with a stronger internal locus of control are healthier. Your locus of control is to the extent to which you believe you can influence your own environment. In contrast, people whose focus is on an external locus of control, meaning like everything outside themselves, often feel helpless or powerless because they give themselves and their control away. Our happiness levels adapt to our circumstances, so our internal perspectives and habits really matter. Prayer, fasting, giving and charity, all help us to discipline that internal perspective, that internal sense of self, that internal voice, and that internal locus of control. Prayer is not only an obligation, but can be a friend when you feel alone or lonely and can serve as a journal to your days and nights, a constant companion with you on your journey and a reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fasting is not only recommended and at times an obligation, but can help you tame your passions and keep you within acceptable boundaries while creating empathy for others. Charity is not only recommended and at times an obligation, but can instantly lift your mood and boost your feelings of wellness anytime you need a quick pick me up. You have these tools at your hand anytime you choose to avail yourself of them. And research suggests that people who have large windfalls of money are back to the same level of happiness within weeks of receiving their win. And that people who suffer traumas like that of a lost limb also return to the same level of happiness that they had prior to their loss. This demonstrates that what is in our heads really does matter. If you are already feeling well, it is important to sustain that feeling for what exists is easier to maintain than to retrieve. However, if you're someone who has struggled more and than they have felt ease, it will be necessary to work through your challenges to get you to a better place within your mind. You have to continually exercise this mind muscle to sustain health in a holistic manner throughout your lifetime. If you remember nothing else Today, remember you alone can influence your own condition 
by learning to focus on your own internal world. As you move forward, take a moment to take inventory of where you have been, where you want to go, what you will need to get there, and who or what you will need to have in your life to get you where you want to go. Identify your barriers and your goals for the next year and the next decade. Take the time to chart your course. As you move forward or look back, you may find at your worst, you may have questioned why you are in this world at all. But as you grow and have grown and overcome adversity, your experiences brought you to where you are now. Look back at all the things you've accomplished until now and look forward with curiosity to what you have in front of you and go for it. Know that your Muslim community, your ICSC community and your families will act as a metaphorical hand at your back to help you stand tall and upright as you continue on this journey. It is now up to you to get to choose how you start the next part of your life. Congrats, graduates, and may Allah bless you eternally. Congratulations. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Thank you so much, Dr. Heather Laird. That was beautiful. And may God bless you and your family as well. And thank you for all that you do for our community. And uh, now we have Brother Pierre Harbin uh, from our Muslim youth group. Go ahead, the floor is yours. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, everyone. Uh, I just want to thank ICSC and everyone, and uh, I just want to congratulate all the graduates. Uh, so, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Rabbi Sali Sadri, wa Sili Amli, wa Hlul Ukbe Bamin al Sani, Yafu Kal Kali. First and foremost, I'd like to thank ICSC for granting me this opportunity today. My name is Pierre Harbin, and as the current spiritual and education director of MYG, I like to speak on the importance of lifelong learning. The two most crucial events that occurred in my life these past few months were my graduation from high school and the growth of a small basil plant that rests on the corner of my windowsill. See, although small and seemingly insignificant to the grandiose challenges of life, raising this plant taught me a crucial truth. There is a lot that I don't know. See, raising a plant is very much like learning to read the Quran for the first time, or practicing an instrument before a recital, or even cracking an egg while avoiding those tedious eggshell bits from falling. In all three cases, it is imperative to be focused and patient to succeed. As I went along my journey of caring for the small basil, I discovered that different angles of sunlight proved far more effective than others for continuous growth. See, adjusting my plant to the environment of, of my bedroom was reminiscent of my experience learning in school. There's no one way to education in the classroom. With each experience, a new petal is born and a deeper understanding is formed. It is the small lessons that we pull from each experience that gifts us with incredible knowledge Every problem that's worked out grants you closer to a better understanding of the subject. Whether it's reading the lines of Shakespeare or spending seven hours figuring out differential calculus. See, there's a famous quote by Michael Jordan. He says, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game winning shot and missed. And I failed over and over again in my life, and that's why I succeed. See, Jordan used every failure as a fuel for every success. Lifelong learning is the ability to use every moment in life as a lesson. See, Michael Jordan coined the term failing forward. And all it means is to keep trying and keep learning because Although it may feel like the odds are against you, but every hurdle can just be used as a stepping stool for success. And this remains true for every graduate because although graduating is commemorating 
commemorating the end of a journey. It's only the start of a new one. Each and every one of us in attendance today is a graduate. We graduate each and every second of our lives. And we will continue to graduate until the afterlife and beyond. The time you went out to protest or speak out against injustice, you graduated from ignorance and submission. The time you chose to wake up a few minutes earlier and learn something new, you graduated from procrastination. And it's each small bit of learning and trying something new that really forms who we are today. See, learning doesn't stop in the classroom, nor does learning stop when you're old. Learning is a fundamental part. It's a gear inside of each and every one of us that allows us to continue moving forward. See, whether it's trying to find out how to become a better person or how to become a better parent or how to become a better child, a student, each and every lesson that we take from life and each and every um, connection that we build with one another, that becomes a fundamental and crucial part in our lives that can help us learn and become better people. And through that, I want you to you guys to just know that we're all graduates, that we're all on our journey to success and lifelong learning. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much, Brother Pierre Harbin, for your beautiful words. And con many congratulations to you on your graduation from high school. We're very proud of you and of all of our graduates. And may God bless you and your family. Uh, Sheikh Asam, go ahead. The floor is yours. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammad al-rasulullah. In the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate. All thanks and praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the whole universe. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you so much for the invitation. So dear graduates, first of all, congratulations. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you, all of you to a bright and a blessed future, inshallah. As you all know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent all the prophets and the messengers to guide their people to the truth and bliss. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala sent our beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well with full wisdom to teach and guide the humanity. And there's a beautiful verse in Surah Ali Imran, chapter three, and the verse number is 164. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Certainly, did Allah bestow great favor upon the believers when he sent among them a messenger from themselves, reciting to them his verses and purifying them and teaching them the book and wisdom. So the importance of learning, teaching and education is a non-disputable matter from every aspect. The training of a human mind is not complete without education. Education makes a person a right thinker. It tells a man how to think and how to make decision. And also education is so crucial and so important. That's why the every starting point of human activity starts with education, proper education. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created and provided us with the tools for acquiring uh, the knowledge, such as hearing, sight, and wisdom. So we 
may be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and use these blessings in a proper way and channel. And again, in many prophetic narrations, a knowledgeable person is given a great respect. Because of the importance of knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and on his behalf to us in Surah Taha said, وَقُلْ Say that رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا I think this is a beautiful dua that we should use constantly until the last breath saying رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا and then later they added out of verse وَفَهْمًا so it means my Lord increase me in knowledge and then understanding uh, in later edition but the verse says رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا and the Prophet وسلم, also spoke so highly about the importance of knowledge and very well known uh, the hadith of him, peace be upon him, is min al -mahdi ila al So seek knowledge from cradle to grave. It means from birth to death until the last minute of life, just make learning uh, part of life, part of your life. And also another narration that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that the scholars are the heirs of the Prophet. So to show the importance of uh, knowledge and, and scholarship. Now, you know, speaking of uh, importance of uh, knowledge, but also I uh, should talk about the other side uh, that when you graduate, of course, as Pierre mentioned, uh, it doesn't mean studying and learning uh, ended there. So until the last breath, keep learning and growing mentally and intellectually. And the best way to do that is of course, through reading uh, and especially reading the good books on different topics, be it on religion or science, you know, and so many different beneficial uh, knowledge. Uh, but also we need to be, you know, uh, cognizant and, and cautious about what we read. So we have to be selective. And there are so many unnecessary knowledge out there, even sometimes, uh, you know, the harmful knowledge. So we have to be really careful with that. As, uh, you know, our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us a beautiful dua. I think we should all memorize or learn and say this dua. Uh, uh, and I will finish with this dua, inshallah. And it's a really beautiful and comprehensive uh, prayer. And he, subhanahu, uh, he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa'. And then he said also, wa min qalbin la yakhsha'. Wa min nafsin la tashba'. Wa min da'watin la yustajabu laha. So it's a beautiful dua. He said, O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from a knowledge which does not benefit, from a heart which does not tremble, and from a nafs or ego which is not content, and from a supplication which is not accepted. So related to our topic, the first part of the dua, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa. Again, we have to be selective, we have to stay away from the harmful knowledge, and then also seek uh, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from a knowledge which does not benefit. So again, congratulations on your graduation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you and grant you to the grant you the love of learning and reading and studying and, and growing intellectually and, and, and mentally, inshallah and many blessings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, beautiful words as always, Shaykh Hassam. Thank you so much for all that you do for our beloved community. And may God bless you and your family. And uh, now we have a short slideshow 
honoring our graduates that was put together by our sister, our beloved sister, Anne-Marie. Uh, so please enjoy. That was beautiful, um, Sister Anne-Marie, and um, congratulations to all of our graduates, and we're very proud of you, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and increase knowledge, and all of us in increased knowledge and in lifelong learning, uh, and the right knowledge, inshallah. Um, and uh, I'd like to um, thank all of our panelist speakers for their beautiful and heartfelt words. And I would like to thank all of our participants for joining us for the, on this beautiful afternoon as we honored our graduates. And again, I wanna say congratulations to all of our ICSC graduates of all ages from preschool all the way to PhD. We're very proud of you. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with lives full of success and lifelong learning and knowledge and happiness. Um, Shay Hassam, if you'd like to please recite Surah Talas, the Arabic part, and I'll do the English part, inshallah, or the English translation, inshallah. Surah Talah. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> The, decli the, the declining day in the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. By the passage of time, surely humanity is in great loss, except those who have faith, do good, and urge each other to truth, and urge each other to perseverance. God has spoken the truth. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you so much again to all of our panelists, speakers, and many congratulations to all of our beloved graduates. And uh, may God bless and protect all of you. And thank you so much for joining us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.